a volatile week saw the Nifty and the Sensex end flat, but financials outperformed. Hello and welcome to the Editor's Roundtable. Over the next 30 minutes, we decode this week's market action. We bring you all the action from the dealing rooms. We tell you why investors are guzzling liquor stocks and the key events to watch next week. I'm Sonia Shanoi and with me, Anuj, Nimesh, Nigel. Also with us on the show this week is Andrew Holland, the Chief Executive Officer at Avendis Alternate Strategies. Guys, uh, what a week, right? One up day, I'm one down day, yeah. one holiday. So <laughs> there yeah. was lots that happened this week. Oh, absolutely. Four day week, but by the end of it, uh, it looked quite long, frankly. Yeah. And, uh, you know, Sonia, what was interesting was that uh, this was a week in which so much happened. Uh, the market kept hitting new highs and kept slipping. Uh, and uh, there was so much reaction in terms of earnings. Uh, it was really all over the place. In between, we had Fed, we had so many earnings. Uh, so a lot packed in, even though it was just four days. You know, it was supposed yeah. to be the big event was supposed to be the Fed. I think it became the smallest event of the week. Yeah. You know, because we had so many domestic queues out. Yeah, and the Fed delivered more or less unexpected lines. So I think, you know, that took uh, the back seat for this week. Correct. And it seemed like a very tiring week. But Anuj, what about the overall market action? There was a sell-off that we saw towards the end of the week. It's little bit of nervousness, you think? Yeah, you know, uh, it, it looks like sell-off because, you know, we saw the all-time high. Yeah. And from, from there it fell. But otherwise, I mean, if you see the market, it was quite, quite fine, actually. Mm -hmm. And what was interesting was we had midweek holiday and we had the Nifty hit all-time high both sides of that holiday. On Tuesday, we hit an all-time high and today also, actually, we hit an all-time high and then we slipped, of course. Uh, we slipped heavily from all-time highs, but you know what was interesting? Despite all the volatility, the Nifty closed where it started the week mm -hmm. and the mid-cap index also did the same. For the week, both Nifty and mid-cap index were actually absolutely flat. Mm -hmm. We didn't do anything. It just it looks like you know there was a lot of activity but the market was essentially flat. Uh, the other highlight for this week was violent earnings reaction. Mm -hmm. You know, if you see what happened to Coforge, uh, for example, PFC on the upside, that was another big thing. Uh, uh, for me, the other talking point was a combination of two data points, the India Volatility Index or the India VIX, which actually surged 40% this week. Mm -hmm. Last week, we had hit absolute rock bottom at 10 and it looked like, you know, there was too much complacency in the system and that had to be shaken out. I think it's happened this week with this 50-40% surge in the VIX. And the other thing is, I request the FIs, please don't go long on the market. Mm. As long as you're short on this market, our market keeps going up. Yeah. The day the uh, FI uh, turned positive and they actually bought in cash and turned uh, positive on the index futures, the market saw a big fall. So as long as they're short, the market's making money. So please stay short on this market. Okay, so overall you're saying the market texture is intact, just a couple of days of volatile Absolutely. movement. Absolutely. And it we will saw. happen, you know, when you go so close to the election results. Yes. The last phases and yeah. the election result, it will always happen with the with volatility. Okay, well, let me just go across to Andrew Holland actually and get his quick view on that. Andrew, uh, how are you feeling about the market? I mean, this seems to be an out and out bull market, right? There's no uh, contrary view at the moment at least. But at some point, would you start to get a bit cautious? Well, whenever you're cautious, uh, markets justify that cautiousness. I mean, yeah. you know, if I listen to what the Fed said of, uh, you know, Wednesday evening, um, you know, the two the two questions that were asked to them, which you know you wouldn't have thought even a few months ago, was, you know, would you would you look at uh, increasing uh, interest rates, or do you think there's going to be stagflation? Now he managed to do, dismiss those points, but you know that's where the market is. It's looking for some landing somewhere. And it's just not getting it. But uh, fortunately, some of the tech results in, in the U.S. Has, uh, has proved well uh, in terms of the, you know, beating expectations. So that's really helped to kind of keep the, the, the kind of momentum uh, more positive uh, after that kind of, uh, you know, kind of fall a uh, few weeks back. Uh, and for our markets, if you remember when we spoke last time, I said, you know, two, two factors uh, for, for, for our market in the short term would be earnings. And particularly for my IT and the banks, IT has still felt that you know you needed uh, interest rates to, to come down to get the sentiment more positive. Uh, but for the banks, if there was any kind of feeling that the worst was behind them in terms of NIM compression, then that could be the, the you know the leader of uh, of the market and and kind of help towards that whether you call it a, a pre-election rally or just a rally. Um, and that's proven to be the case. Most of the banks have uh, have come through. Uh, I think what we've, we felt was going to be a, a pretty hard time for them last quarter and I think uh, the, the, the commentary is, is more positive. So I think the banking sector can continue to, to lead the market higher. Mm, okay, banking will keep uh, uh, leading the market higher. Andrew, hi, good evening. What about the IT sector? We've seen all the big numbers now. Uh, uh, do you think uh, that continues to remain the underperformer? 
I think so, Anuj. I think um, you know the problem is that um, the, the, you know the commentary again was was very lukewarm in terms of any kind of bottom to the, the kind of uh, order, orders for them. Um, and, and really, you know, I think the sentiment can only turn then when interest rates look to the, they're going to fall in the U.S. And I think that's the catalyst. And of course, that's been pushed back now to. At the early September, but I think most consensus is now November, December. So it's another quarter where I think you know you don't need to be in the IT sector. I think the banking sector you can make some good money. Okay, and Imesh, what are the dealing rooms talking about right now? Is there any caution or is it an out and out up move? There's a bit of caution as well. You know, I'll call it a, a week of consolidation, and, and and expectedly so at record highs. You're going to see this, uh, I, but again, you know, the sense I'm getting is maybe you'll see some sideways, uh, you know, market for the next few weeks. Few reasons for that. One, uh, the, the election jitters. As we move towards the final end, there's going to be some bit of concerns there. There is a lot of sector rotation happening as well, as well as risk aversion, which means that it will be very, very selective market. And that's showing up in the flows as well. Even the flows of late have been very, very selective into some pockets like PSUs. Now, uh, the other big factor is the earnings, and we're seeing sharp reactions to earnings as well. On Thursday, there was a 10% uh, reaction to uh, to Chola, Chola Mandalam's uh, good earnings. And on Friday, we saw a 10% down, uh, down reaction to, 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 uh, uh, to co-forge reaction, to co-forge earnings. So, again, that's going to continue is what my sense is. The other thing which I've been tracking very closely and that seems to have emerged again is the large blocks. Today, we saw a large block in Yes Bank, Carlyle sold 2%. I've been tracking a few other large block deals as well, the likes of uh, Indus Tower, AB Capital, l &T Finance. Some large blocks are expected in these, these names. But the other big factor to watch out is the Chinese market. We've been not talking about the big surge in the China market in the last 8 to 10 days. So I'll just leave it uh, with what India has been versus the peers uh, since the beginning of this year. In fact, uh, while the Indian markets are at record highs, India has relatively underperformed the, the global peers. Just look at the, the, the list now. The Nifty is up 4%, why today? But if you look at the S&P 500, that's up 5%. Nasdaq is up 6 percent Hang Seng is up 11%, and Nikkei is up 14%. So relative to the uh, global and Asian peers, India has relatively underperformed. But my sense is for the next couple of weeks, you might see a bit of sideways move, but the uh, action in stock specific may continue because of domestic flows are quite strong. Okay, the domestic flows are quite strong. Uh, Andrew, I wanted to come to you on a couple of pockets, right, which did uh, pretty well this week. One of them was the auto space because you had some solid numbers in terms of auto sales. The two-wheeler sales were very good and I know you track the space very closely. Any thoughts on any follow-on buying that you expect here and from an investment standpoint, what's your view? No, the, the results were, were good and I think um, they'll continue to be good. Um, I, I would I would still think that I, I I want to probably play the auto components a little bit more uh, harder than the than the auto stocks themselves. I think that's where I think we're going to see the next pocket of action, uh, particularly with you know with EVs and 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 and, and some of the uh, you know uh, some of the investors which are coming into to the auto component side, uh, which we've seen over the past week. So I think these are kind of catalysts uh, for the for the auto components. I think there's. Uh, They've underperformed a little bit to my mind, so I think that that's where we're going to see the next uh, the next up leg for, for, for in, within the auto sector uh, um, overall. So I like the auto sector. I, I, I still think though that the, the market is going to you know could keep reacting as as just mentioned uh, to the earnings up until the elections um, with the volatility, and of course thereafter, and, and, and maybe you know we could talk about this a bit later. Is 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 what's going to happen in the budget, and would there be any increase in capital gains tax? Because I think that's what's going to uh, be on the market's mind as soon as the election is over. Okay, well, let's talk about some of our favorite topic, right? Alcohol stocks, been the flavor of this uh, season. Why are investors guzzling them down? Uh, Nigel, first tell us, are you guzzling them down? And then why are investors doing so? I'm sipping, <laughs> not guzzling. But health first, but I'll tell you what, the bulls, they have been guzzling. The alcohol stocks, actually, because in the last one year or so, well, you look at United Beauties, United Spirits, Radical Kaitan, well, all of them, you know, they have been on fire, giving you big, big returns. So I said, let's delve a little bit more and let's look at the potential reasons why, in fact, these stocks are up and about. Premiumization, that's the big theme out there. Radical Kaitan, in the past week itself, they launched a single malt, and I'll tell you what, per bottle, they launched it at 5 lakh rupees. Limited edition, only 400 bottles, but almost sold out. So that's the kind of demand you have for, pre for in terms of premiumization. United Spirits, you look at their mix, you know, prestige and above, uh, it used to be much lower as a percentage of their total mix. But in the last few years, the, some of the popular brands have been sold and prestige and above is contributing far more. 
clearly showing the focus out there. United Beauties as well, the, you know, the new uh, in charge came in there and he said, premiumization is something I'm focusing on. They also highlighted that beers underpenetrated in the urban market. So they said that that'll be a focal point and a lot of, uh, you know, focus in terms of the new launches as well. And it's helped them because in Karnataka, they have pulled back some market share and premiumization as well as a percentage of the mix has gradually moving up. Next up, so that was the first reason, premiumization. The next up is less of regulatory intervention. For example, in terms of tax rates, the excise rate on United Beauty's gross sales, well, between 2009 to 2014, it went up from around 32% to 45%. Then it went to around 55%. But in the last few years, it's been more or less stable. So when the taxes are more or less stable, well, that's what helps the business. We've seen this even with ITC. There's not been any big tweaking in terms of taxes out there. And that's why the cigarette volume growth has been fairly good. So some stabilization in terms of taxes, that's what's helped them as well. Now the street is getting a little bit optimistic. Can margins improve from year on? There's a focus on premiumization, so that obviously helps. Barley prices, they had shot up. Now they've come down a little bit and the crop is good. So in all probability, barley prices will be fa fairly, uh, you know, well behaved. e, &E inflation is not as high as expected. So that's worked in their favor as well. And glass bottle prices, well, they have been under control. So all these factors put it together. The street believes maybe, in fact, margins could look up from year on. The other toss-up is between alcohol companies and FMCG companies. Now, you're going to get better growth coming in from some of these uh, alcohol beverage companies. So maybe that's why you're seeing more amount of money flowing out there. It could be nearly around one and a half to around two times in terms of growth in comparison to these FMCG companies. And also, some of these companies are more urban-facing. And we know rural India has been a little of a problem pocket. So maybe that could be another factor as well. And um, finally, you know, the India-UK FTA treaty, that's something that you're waiting by for. It could lower the prices of scotch, so that's why it could help volumes as well. Margins could be capped, but that's another trigger that you're looking at. And finally, it's elections. So the verdict is split out, split out there. Whether during elections you see higher consumption, higher sales, or because there are more number of dry days, well, we'll see how that goes. But I didn't get any big trend out there, but it's a toss-up between the two. And finally, you know, I'm going to get Andrew's view in terms of what is the view on the stocks. But drink because you're happy, but never because you're miserable. That's a quote that I thought, you know, it fits pretty well getting into uh, the weekend. Well, Andrew, that's my quote, but I wanted to ask you, what about the alcohol stocks? Yeah. What's your take on that? They've done very, very well, mind you. Uh, in a few hours, I'll be sipping one, but what's the view on the stocks? Yeah, you've, um, Nigel, I think you've very nicely got everyone into a, a Friday mood for drinking. Uh, that's for sure. Um, but it's something we talked about uh, on many occasions now about premiumization. I, I still think we're at the, the very start of the runway. If, if anything, the, the, if it's an aeroplane, it's just got out of the hangar. So I think this is a trend given our population uh, and, and the youth population that we have. I, I just think that this is a story that's going to you know, continue for the next at least two to three years in terms of margin improvements for the alcohol companies and, and non-alcoholic uh, beverages as well. So um, it's early stages, uh, Nigel. I think uh, there's plenty of more to, to come from, from the sector. And I think you'll find that. Uh, the one thing, I, the only area that I might disagree is on, on, on the uh, FDA with the, with the UK for Scotch. It might bring a bit more competition in terms of pricing. Uh, mm -hmm. But otherwise, I think, um, I think that you know, the sector as a whole um, will we'll do well. Okay, let's do one thing. Let's take a quick commercial break. On that note, we'll be back with the key events to watch out for next week. We'll continue to decode the market action as well. Stay tuned. Welcome back to Editor's Roundtable. We've been talking about a lot of the stocks in focus. Andrew Holland, Chief Executive Officer at Avendis Alternate Strategies, has also been with us. Uh, you know, one space that I want to talk about is uh, the auto space. But before that, of course, there are big events to watch out for as well. Uh, so let me start with the auto sector because there are plenty of auto companies that will be reporting their numbers next week. Uh, so let me just get uh, some of them on board. Now, next week is a big week for the two-wheeler space. So you have names like Hero Motor Corp, TVS Motor that will be reporting 
exporting numbers on 8th. There's Escorts on the 9th, there's Tata Motors on the 10th and there's Bharat Forge on the 8th of May as well. So big week for autos. What do you expect? Very strong numbers from the auto sector. Hero Motor Corp, Nomura expects a revenue growth of 13%, EBITDA growth of 28% and margin improvement as well. TVS Motor, very strong revenue growth of 22%, EBITDA up 31% and volume growth of 22% this time around. Uh, Tata Motors as well, GLR volumes have been very strong, up almost 16% year on year in quarter 4 and margins are expected to increase. But the stock I'm watching very closely is Hero Motor Corp. I'll tell you why. Because it's the cheapest stock in the two-wheeler space currently. It's trading at 18 times forward versus peers like Bajaj Auto trading at 28 times and TVS Motor trading at 37 times. Not just that, Hero Motor Corp has been seeing an improvement in rural demand. April sales were very strong. I leave you with the valuations for the entire sector. They'll come up for you on the screen. Now, the other thing I'm watching out for is the Aadhaar Housing Finance IPO that opens next week. But I'll come to that in a bit. Uh, Andrew, I, you know, you made a mention about the auto stocks, but particularly on names like Hero Motor Corp. Are they attractive for you given the kind of valuation discount that Hero is trading at compared to its peers? I suppose you've got to look at the the, uh, the question is why is it trading at such a discount? And I think it's partly because of you know performance over the uh, you know compared to its peers uh, over the over the past year or so. And I think uh, I think the market will need convincing through the results uh, that the worst is behind them. That margin improvement is there. So um, yes, it looks cheap uh, against the the the, the, other, the other companies, but there's a reason for it. So I think. No, no need to kind of rush into it now. Wait for the results to come out, see what the commentary is, uh, and see if the, the improvements there, not just for the, the last quarter, but obviously, you know, quarters going ahead. I think that would be the key. Okay, the other big event to watch, one of the events is the Aadhaar Housing Finance IPO that opens on the 8th of May. Now, this is India's largest affordable housing financer. It's a Blackstone-backed company. Blackstone owns 99% stake. It caters to the low-cost housing segment and mostly offers loans to retail consumers in the salaried class, in the self-employed class. Very strong earnings growth. Loans have grown 53% compounded since FY16. Business has been strong as well. Last year in FY24, the AUM growth was 20%. And let's not forget the housing finance market is a very underpenetrated market in India right now. Not even 10% of our GDP is catered to buy the housing finance market. So Blackstone is selling stake. It will reduce its stake to 53% after the IPO from 99% currently. The only risk is that Blackstone's fund life is, 20, is still 2030. So there is a risk of more promoter stake sale as well in the near future. But uh, Andrew, your thoughts here on uh, this IPO particularly and also this segment, right? Housing finance, which is still very underpenetrated. Yeah, no, it's a sector which we like. Um, you know, I mean, obviously, we'll have to see the pricing um, on, on the company in terms of the IPO. But, uh, I, you know, I believe it's going to be, um, you know, kind of uh, well bid for. Um, so, so, so that's what the market's already telling me. Um, but, you know, I think, I think the whole financial sector is something which, you know, we, we, we've got to keep in mind that uh, if, you know, we're going to be a five, six trillion dollar economy, you know, you've got to see the growth in the, in, in, in the finance sector. So come, in housing finance, MBFCs, you know, private banks and the PSU banks all have to continue to grow quite strongly. So it's a theme that I think will continue to play out. Yes, there's pressure on NIMS at the moment for, for the banks, but I think that we're, that, that seems to be behind us now. And I think I, I think this sector, which has been a you know a serial underperformer for the past year, it must be what, 15% underperformance of, against the Nifty. I think it's time for that underperformance to, to, to reverse itself now. Mm. Okay, and, and you spoke about uh, you know the the, uh, the reversal in the in the financials. You you expect them to outperform now, but within the within the private banks, what would be your top pick? Because you know Kotak Bank has corrected sharply now trading at attractive valuations. So is the case with uh, the other private banks as well. Like NGFC hasn't performed for the last 15 to 18 months. What would be your picking order in terms of uh, picking the private bank stocks? No, I think I, uh, you know in terms of I can't give you the picking order in terms of stocks, but I think. Um, I think what I would say is this: it's it's a sector which you you know whether you look at those two laggards which you mentioned in terms of HDFC and Kota, there's a reason for that. There's management changes, uh, but as soon as those management start to you know step on the the, the pedal, which I'm sure they will, uh, these are the opportunities that you get uh, to buy into quality banks. 
uh, where you know nothing's really changed in terms of the banking itself and the procedures and the policies and how they operate. Um, it's just obviously you know that there's uh, uh, some other banks which have uh, management which have you know been have just been performing exceptionally well, and that that's the key uh, for those banks. So I'm not saying that these banks haven't uh, got exceptional management. It's just that they see that at the moment it's a transition phase for them. Uh, but once they get through this, which I think we're very close to, uh, for, for some of them, then you know you'll start to see the re-rating of these banks as well. Okay. All right, uh, Andrew, I wanted to ask you about uh, you know the metal companies because uh, we have seen that China is unlocking, and there's one way of playing it that some of these fairest, non-fairest names have done very, very well. The dollar index as well has cooled off, and there is a bit of a supply glut. And India is well placed. How would you approach some of these metal stocks here in India? Yeah, no, they've had a, a great run, and um, you know we've uh, we, we called it pretty early, so I'm, I'm I'm happy with that. I'm probably a little bit kind of more neutral in the very short term. I think with China, I think you know you're starting to see uh, two things. One is a you know a kind of a bottoming out of the economy, and two, you're starting to see a lot more brokers now saying that that, that, the, that the you know the the, the country's a buy, um, and that's based on I think uh, a lot of factors, but. Uh, Without going into those, I think that's good for the for the metal stocks going forward. So I think um, I think if you see a pickup in China, that's going to be great news. Uh, I'm not so sure it's great news for some of the auto companies as a, as input costs, but uh, certainly good for the metal stocks. Uh, Andrew, uh, the other big uh, you know theme that's going to play out is the PSUs. We've seen a big outperformance in the PSU stocks. Uh, anything uh, within the sectors that you like, with the with the power PSUs or rail PSUs for that matter. Anything uh, that, that strikes you in terms of valuations and in terms of growth as well? The, the themes of uh, whether it's defence stocks, whether it's uh, railway stocks, whether it's uh, the banking PSU stocks, um, you know, the, these themes are just not going to go away from us over the next two to three years. So, um, yes, um, you know, the valuations sometimes get a bit uh, overextended um, and you see those sharp corrections. Those are the times when you just need to buy because Defense spending, uh, you know, green energy, uh, railways, construction. You know, these are, these are the, what the government's going to be doing. And if you get private capex coming in as well at some point, um, you know, this whole sector is going to is going to continue to to do well. So I think um, you know those are the the themes that you play and the companies there uh, you find which are best positioned to 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 really kind of take advantage of the of the of the order books that's going to come to them. Okay, thanks a lot, Andrew, for joining in. And it's curtains down now on Editor's Roundtable. But guys, the weekend is back. And, uh, is back and you I know guess, my favorite yes. question. <laughs> I, think <laughs> Mish, I think I'm Mish has planned. I know for sure that you're going for the match today. Yeah, so I'm, I'm glad I'm that you're for spending Mumbai that. Kick, yeah, good, yeah. Good, good. And what about you? I'm not doing anything. I'm <laughs> just going to relax and chill. And what about you guys? Any weekend plans? I just uh, have a get-together at uh, some friend's house. So... Nigel, I know Nigel Pilates Nigel and then the gym and yeah, then swimming. Then the swimming. Yeah, the, uh, and then a little then bit of you know, <laughs> take it easy. <laughs> some good music, uh, some good whiskey. Yeah. Okay, cool off a little bit. Okay, guys, uh, you guys have a great weekend. We'll be back bright and early on Monday morning.